Super Smash Brothers on Switch. Playable Octolings. Super Smash Bros. All right, yeah, I think I'm done here. That was perfect. All right, as per usual, I'm here to give you my full analysis and general thoughts on everything announced at this big, beefy March Nintendo Direct that we just saw this week. Um, because these videos tend to run a little long, it might seem like I'm brushing over some things, but I will be making separate videos for the huge announcements. But without further ado, here you go. So they kicked the presentation off with a pretty good sized 3DS section, which was all 3DS games. Um, I won't talk a lot about this because I really don't play the 3DS anymore. It just means that uh, the 3DS is still gonna be a thing. We even got a game announcement for 2019. I assumed that 2018 would be the last year that major developers would be developing for the 3DS, but now we're getting a new Nintendo published game sometime in 2019. So it looks like they're not done with this system yet. Um, what that kind of means for me is they're gonna continue making you know, games for both. Uh, for example, Fire Emblem Warriors was built so it could run on both. Whereas if it had just been built for the Switch from the ground up, um, it would have been a lot better looking game and maybe a better playing game. Um, that's my only concern there. The Luigi's Mansion thing is also a big concern for me. I really wish that would have just been for Switch. A lot of people have been pining for a Luigi's Mansion game on Switch, and now it doesn't look like it's going to happen for at least a couple more years. Um, this also kind of makes the virtual console discussion a little blurry because a lot of people want GameCube games for the potential virtual console that could come with the Nintendo Switch online service. But when they're releasing a Luigi's Mansion uh, HD remake, it, it kind of looks like they're not going to try to release it on another system for probably less money for just the straight emulator. But we'll see what happens there. Um, I wish that they hadn't focused so much on the 3DS, but I'll take what I can get. Then the first actual Switch headline revolved around Kirby Star Allies. Um, not a whole lot of new information here. I mean, there's not a whole lot of new information left at this point with just a week away from release. But we did find out that characters like King DDD and also the Mennonite characters will also be able to be Star Allies, which is kind of cool. Um, my one concern there is that the Star Allies are already so powerful that using King D to D and Meta Knight might just mean you can just kind of walk through the game like those videos we've been seeing of the demo. Um, it is a Kirby game, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. But either way, it looks pretty cool. Another big announcement for that Kirby game is that they're also gonna be adding new Star Allies past the release date. Um, there's gonna be continued support for this game, with free DLC. And that's awesome. Nintendo is continuing this trend with every Nintendo published game that's come out on Switch so far. They've had all of this free updates um, and Kirby is not going to not continue that. <laughs> Next up, we got a slightly unexpected announcement in the form of Okami HD. Now this is, I believe, a PlayStation game. It's been ported over to multiple systems. Beautiful art style, love that cell shaded style with the traditional Japanese fat brush strokes type of art. Looks really fun. They also have touchscreen features when you're using your celestial brush and when it's in uh, the TV mode, you can also use the Joy-Cons to use your brush stroke moves, which looks pretty cool. After that, we got a uh, Sushi Striker, the way of the Sushido or something like that. Um, this was a 3DS game that was announced last year and now it's gonna come to Switch as well. Um, yeah, I like the art style, looked pretty cool, but the gameplay didn't intrigue me at all, just being honest, but if uh, that excites you, that's coming this summer. If you follow my channel pretty closely, you might have guessed that this next part of the Direct was definitely my favorite part overall, and that was Octopath Traveler. This was another one of those intimate developer face-to-face -face videos. I love this style that they've done throughout the rollout process. It just seems like the developers really care about this game and care about the people who are gonna play it and what they want. 
But anyways, they announced two new jobs here, the merchant and the apothecary. Not gonna get too deep into those, like I said, probably make a full video about this. Um, they also announced the dual job system, which is gonna add a whole another layer of depth. Awesome stuff. And finally, we got that big announcement of the release date, finally. And it's looking like it's gonna be pretty far away still, July 13th. Um, my anticipation is just gonna keep growing and growing, so it's gonna be so great when it comes out. Um, I think this is great for those summer months. Last year, we had such a big summer with ARMS, Mario Rabbids, and uh, Splatoon 2, that I, it was, prior to this Direct, it was looking like this summer was gonna be pretty dry compared to last, but after this Direct, it's looking like it's gonna be pretty action-packed, and uh, Octopath Traveler is gonna be the cherry and the whipped cream and most of the ice cream for my summer. But also one thing to note is that they took the project uh, word out of the title. So it looks like this is gonna be the official title, Octopath Traveler. Prior to this, it had been called Project Octopath Traveler as a working title. I assumed that they would come up with a newer name, but looks like Octopath Traveler is coming out July 13th, 2018. Next, we gotta see the first bit of gameplay ever shown for Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about this game. I've never played any of either of those series. I know it has a big cult following, and from what I could tell, the general consensus about this trailer was that people were surprised or maybe less than thrilled about the gameplay. It's kind of a top-down hack and slash thing, and I guess that's not what it is traditionally. I don't know, I'm ignorant, that's all I'm gonna say about it, but if you're excited for that, it's coming out this year. We also got to see our first look at the Dark Souls Remastered gameplay, and I can say that it looks just as good as Dark Souls 3. Maybe a little less good, but looks great. So excited for that. They're also going to be doing a network test where everyone can play a demo, and I'm assuming it'll be an online demo type of thing. Super excited for that. No date yet, but stay excited. Uh, they also announced which was way out of left field for me, a Solaire of Astoria amiibo. We're getting a Dark Souls amiibo. I guess it makes sense since they've started doing, you know, things like the Hollow Knight and Shovel Knight amiibos, but wow, I was not expecting that, but definitely pre-ordering that, wow. Dark Souls Remastered, I think it's Mar or May 25th that's coming out. So after that, we got a little blurb about the My Nintendo Rewards thing. Um, I don't know why they put that in there. I was very upset when that happened just because, you know, you anticipate this thing for so long and you only have 30 minutes of good stuff and you're like, why are you wasting part of my 30 minutes? But whatever. Then they started talking about Mario Tennis Aces. They allotted like a good five minutes for Mario Tennis Aces. Like I said, I'm not gonna talk about these big announcements too much, but I liked what I saw. We got almost the full roster. They said there's gonna be at least 15 characters, and they showed us 15 characters, all of which looked pretty great. I loved the Rosalina model. She's like slightly hovering above the ground. Also, the Chain Chomp was adorable. I've seen so much good fan art since that came out on Twitter. Adorable. Um, they kind of explained the energy bar system. Like I said, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but the energy bar system looks really cool. You can kind of allot your energy to different type of moves. Like you can slow down time if you want with your energy, or you can use that energy to do your super shot. Looks pretty sweet to me. Um, they also announced uh, they're gonna be doing a lot of tournaments for this. So looks like they're gonna try to pr promote the competitive scene quite a bit. And also they showed a reward for participating in a tournament would be a new character. So it looks like they're gonna be adding characters post-release and continuing with that trend, just like we now know Kirby is going to, of continuing free updates and DLC past the release date. Awesome job, Nintendo. I'm so excited for this game. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was easily one of my top five games on the Wii U. And in fact, one of the only Wii U games that I actually finished all the way through. Um, they're bringing it over to Switch. It is a port, which is, uh, you know, a little iffy, especially with all the other ports announced at this Direct. But either way, I'm excited. I will definitely spend another $30 to play that game again on the Switch. Looks great. They're also adding some Super Mario Odyssey levels, which is awesome too. Excited for that. After that, we got an Undertale 
very vague announcement. They said it's coming sometime soon. It is coming. That is a uh, very big cult following uh, indie RPG game, kind of based around the Mario and Luigi RPG. So that's going to be a good addition to the Switch. After that, we got Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Oh my goodness. I, to be honest, we kind of knew about this. Um, there was rumors about a month or two ago about how Crash Bandicoot was, when it was ported over and remastered, they made a deal where it had to be exclusively on PS4 for a year, but then after that year was up, they could bring it to all the other systems. So we kind of saw that coming. Um, what I, I'm really excited for, and this kind of confirms that it's actually gonna happen. Um, apparently they're doing the same thing with the Spyro games that came out for PlayStation. They're remastering them all. And then it's gonna be an exclusive on PlayStation for a year and then could potentially come over to Switch. And I'm really excited for that. And Crash Bandicoot uh, coming to Switch kind of makes that more of a reality for me. Um, that'll be awesome. That's coming July 10th, adding that big packed, action-packed summer. Following Crash, we got the Little Nightmares Complete Edition announcement. That is a great indie game being ported over. Um, that's coming May 18th. That's all I gotta say about that. We also got South Park Fractured But Whole. This was a huge surprise for me. I'm not super excited. I don't even think I'll play this game on Switch, but just the fact that it's gonna be on Switch is a big deal. I think that Dark Souls and Doom and Skyrim have all opened the door for these more mature games to be on Switch, and it's great. I hope that soon we stop seeing the ports that came out a year or two ago being brought over and maybe a consolidation of release dates for all systems with the Switch for these mature games. Um, after that, we got Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. No new information at all. I don't know what they could have said at this point. I was hoping maybe for the champion playable characters like Mifa and Rivali and all those, but of course that's not gonna happen. We now know that that's coming May 18th. It's a good date for that. If you never played Hyrule Warriors, Watch out for that. As the Direct began to wind down a little bit, we got the first of three very unexpected headlines, with the first being ARMS related. Um, I guess Nintendo is now holding a Nintendo sponsored championship, or it's called the US and Canada Open Championship for ARMS. And that's gonna be held March 31st at the Nintendo headquarters. Um, how it works is in this 10 day window, it started March 8th, I believe it goes to March 18th. It's something like that, correct me if I'm wrong, it might be a seven day window, but the top eight players in ranked matches in this 10 day window will be invited out to that Nintendo headquarters tournament on March 31st to duke it out. Hopefully we see Resolve and Gore Magala, That's those are my picks, the good American boys. I'm hoping we see them there. It's great that Nintendo is trying to do something internally with the competitive arm scene. Um, this is kind of a weird system, but it's cool to see and I hope that we see some familiar faces up there. Um, they're also going to be holding a test punch on March 31st, which I thought was really interesting. Trying to bring more people to the game. Um, I have no problems with that. Uh, they also announced that Yabuki-san would be holding an ARMS presentation at GDC, where he's going to be talking about how they built the game from the ground up. Um, it was interesting that they mentioned this to me, and it kind of got me thinking that maybe Yabuki is gonna be announcing something big about ARMS at GDC during that presentation. It just seemed weird that they would even mention that he's talking about it at GDC, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we get a big ARMS announcement at GDC from Yabuki himself. <laughs> Callie, you crack me up, dude. Oh, sorry guys, we were just chatting. But after the ARMS announcement, we got the big Splatoon 2 news. And this is another one I don't wanna talk about too much. I'm gonna make a full video about this, but uh, first we got, of course, the Callie thing and she was wearing that really cute cardigan. It was just so hype. I would've just been happy with the 3.0 update. Then all of a sudden, it goes like the Sonic Mania little transition thing. And that announcement video, Oh my goodness. I was watching the direct with a lot of people, not a lot of people, but a few people who aren't necessarily big Nintendo fans and they definitely don't play Splatoon. And 
even if them not knowing anything about really Splatoon or what it is, that announcement video got everyone dancing. It was like stomp the yard or something in that house. Just like, pff, pff, pff. oh my goodness, so hype. Um, we had the Marina and Pearl as Biggie and Tupac. So exciting. I, that was the one of the best announcement trailers I've ever seen. And the playable Octolinks, the new story campaign, so much excitement, 100 plus new outfits, what the heck? I'm so excited for that expansion pack. Look out for a video on that soon. I'll talk and elaborate more about that later. And finally, right after the Splatoon 2 announcement, we got, uh, we thought it was done at first, and then it cut to a scene of two Inklings spraying at each other. I knew what it was as soon as I saw the Inklings and like that different, it, it looked like the Inklings, but you could tell it wasn't in the Splatoon 2 engine. Like you could just, I just knew it was Super Smash Bros. I think a lot of people did as soon as they saw that. Um, I was not expecting that at all. I honestly, I am super excited that it's coming and I'm gonna play it. It's gonna be a huge part of my channel. I was honestly hoping that it would have come out in 2019. Um, if Pokemon Switch comes out in 2018, it seems like they're just kind of like blowing their whole load in this one second year. I mean, I don't know what huge titles, there's Metroid Prime, got like Pikmin, um, but after that, there's not gonna be a whole lot to release in uh, year three at this point. Also, I'm a little concerned about how Super Smash Bros coming so early in the Switch's life cycle, how that's gonna negatively affect the ARMS competitive scene. Um, ARMS is still a very much baby in its uh, life. It hasn't even been out for nine months yet. And uh, it's already struggling to find its place in the big fighting game competitions. Like it wasn't able to make Evo this year. And I doubt it's gonna make it next year if we have this big shiny new Super Smash Bros. I can see that easily taking its place. Um, that's my one concern. Like I said, I'm super excited. Definitely gonna be playing a lot of that, but I love ARMS. ARMS is my favorite Switch game. And I'm a little concerned for how Super Smash Bros in 2018 might affect that. But I will talk way more about that later. Um, for now, that's all I got. My biggest concern coming out of this Direct is as a Pokemon fan. You know that I'm very speculative about when Pokemon Switch is coming. I've talked about that a lot. And I'm also very skeptical that it's even coming in 2018 now, especially after this Direct. Um, Pokemon games have traditionally been announced in January, February, or March of the same year that they released. Um, maybe it's an E3 announcement that's very out of character for the Pokemon company. They have never really announced any Pokemon related stuff at E3, so it's hard to subscribe to that theory, but you never know. But I'm, I'm becoming very skeptical about whether it's actually coming. Um, my one prediction is maybe will get a Pokemon Direct by the end of March. I knew that they weren't gonna announce Pokemon at this Direct because they would dedicate a Pokemon Direct to it like they normally do. So maybe we'll get one like towards the end of March. I would be very excited for that. Otherwise, I don't think Pokemon is coming in 2018. If you've got any interesting thoughts about this March Nintendo Direct, please let me know down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture, and thank you so much for watching. Yeah.